Are you someone that's never learned to search the scriptures? Maybe you've read the scriptures all your life and you've got your paper scriptures out and maybe you've even used a topical guide or a Bible dictionary to look for verses on a given topic, but that's different than searching the scriptures. And having paper scriptures is great, but it's really hard to search the scriptures for multiple words that are in a verse or, or many verses and try to understand like the, the context and the, the patterns that emerge when you find similar verses in this way. So I'm going to demonstrate using scripture notes how, like one example of something I did this past week, in searching the scriptures, how it leads you from one place to another to another. So I'm going to take from my text here, Hebrews chapter 12, particularly verse 23. But what's, what's happening here is the author of Hebrews has been talking about in this section how the ancient Israelites were not able to come to Mount Sinai. They were forbidden to touch the mount. And so coming down here, the uh, author says, But ye, meaning the Christians, those that follow Jesus Christ, are come unto Mount Zion. And unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly, and the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. And it goes on, but I just want to focus here. This phrase, which are written in heaven, kind of caught my eye. And I was wondering about that. And so I thought, I'm just going to do a search and see here. If if names are written in heaven, I wanted to know, well, name and heaven. I wanted to see what other verses had these two words in it. And the, the wild card there, the asterisk after name, is going to pull in names and named and things of that nature. So here's 149 verses. In fact, with scriptures, I'm going to close this and I'm going to turn on scriptures only filter so that I just get the scripture results from this. So there's 71 verses that cut it in half, excluding other uh, books and stuff in the library. So we can start to go down through here. I, I'll hit Control F and I'll just type name. And that highlights with the browser function all of the, the uh, word name down below. So let us make a name. Uh, thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. Blot out their name from under heaven. Uh, that's the Lord say, talking to Moses. He's going to blot out the, the name of Israel because of their wickedness and backsliding and make Moses uh, a mightier nation. Uh, the Lord will not spare him. The Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. So we can go down through these. And as you, you read down through these, there's a variety of things being talked about here. And... Uh, you know, the, let's see, the verse I want to uh, go down to here, one of them in Nehemiah, but if ye turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now, when I read this one, I was like, hmm, the uttermost part of the heaven. That's an interesting phrase. And so just leaving everything where it is, I can pull up another search and just do a, a search for the word uttermost, which is what I did uh, last week as, as well. So this comes up with a few verses, you know, and I can change the, the search to uttermost and go down through these. And honestly, I didn't find anything that uh, jumped out at me too much as I was going down through these verses, but this is you know, digging in and, and trying to research something and not losing my place on the prior search. So, you know, I can then close these panes and I'm right back where I started. And so I continue on down now and I'm going to jump down here to the book of Acts. So Acts, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So there's only one name given to mankind that we can be saved by. Uh, keep coming down here. Revelation 3.12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, 
and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. So this is kind of a loaded verse, and I'm not going to try to interpret and dissect all the verses here. I just want to demonstrate uh, searching at, for these things. Um, I will just say that in this particular verse, we can see that there is a name written upon these individuals, those that overcome, and uh, that there is a new Jerusalem that's going to come down out of heaven. Uh, we might say from the uttermost part of heaven. So uh, also having his name put upon us does indicate that we are family. Just like my last name is Norton and my wife and children all have that last name. So my name has been put upon them, but we're all seeking to have Jesus Christ's name put upon us so that we are identified as members of his family. Okay, now I came down here a little further and I got to this verse in section 76 of the Doctrine and Covenants. And it says, These are they whose names are written in heaven, where God and Christ are the judge of all. And so I see that and I go, oh, names that are written in heaven. Well, I want to see this further. So I click here and I open up to this section. And as I scroll up to see what it's talking about here, I can see some similar language to what we've read. Um, but I'll come up here to the top of this section. Uh, let's see. The resurrection of the just. Let's see, where does it start? You know, the real. Da, 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 da. Write the voice. We bear record. This is the testimony of the gospel of Christ concerning them who will come forth in the resurrection of the just. These are celestial uh, individuals, people that are going to obtain the highest degree of glory. They are they who receive the testimony of Jesus. They've kept the commandments, who overcome by faith and are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, which the Father sheds forth upon all those who are just and true. They are they who are the church, the firstborn. They are they into whose hands the Father has given all things. They're priests and kings, received of the fullness and of his glory, priests after the order of Melchizedek, which was after the order of Enoch, which is after the order of the only begotten Son. Wherefore, is, as it is written, they are gods, even the sons of God. Wherefore, all things are theirs. They are Christ's, and Christ is God's. They shall overcome all things. So, it's talking about the church of the firstborn and individuals who are uh, in this category. If we come down here a little further, these are they who are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God. It's exactly what we just read over here in Hebrews. The heavenly place, the holiest of all. These are they who have come to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of Enoch and of the firstborn. Well, that's exactly what's over here in verse 22 of Hebrews 12. You know, very similar. Um, they are just men made perfect, which is also mentioned in verse 23. So these are celestial people. And so as, as we're digging, we're, we're picking up more and more information about understanding that particular verse. And so now let's see. Uh, what, what I did next, it's talking about names that are written up here and I can yeah it is written that they are gods even the sons of God and I can't remember if there's another yeah these are they whose names are written in heaven so if the names are written I want to next do a search over here for name and written and so I'll hit enter and it will refresh this pane and now I've got 57 verses similar to that and as I start to go down through these verses, the verse that stood out to me was here in, uh, let's see, Revelation 17, 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Now, the, the part here that's critical is 
names are written in the book of life and from the foundation of the world. Now that's interesting to me as well. And I start thinking, okay, so if this book is, if all these things, references are talking about the book of life and from the foundation of the world, perhaps there are some who were foreordained with their names written in the book of life and I need to study a little bit about the book of life. So then what I do is I open up the library and I go to the study helps and I'll select all here and I'll just type book of life. And that will start filtering all the results. And so now I've got these two entries here on the book of life and I'll open both of them up and do something here to just demonstrate how I would study this. There's 14 results here in the Bible dictionary. That's BD over here. And this is the topical guide entry, TG, which also references the Bible dictionary, Book of Life. So we get a little bit of text in the Bible dictionary and then a bunch of verses on both of these. It says it's spoken of in these verses, the Book of Life, and also in these places. In one sense, the book of life is the sum total of one's thoughts and actions, the record of his life. However, the scriptures indicate that a heavenly record is kept of the faithful, whose names are recorded, as well as an account of their righteous deeds. So, now, if I wanted to study this, what I would do is I would create a collection note for both of these items. And once that collection note comes up, I will close both of these, and I, you can see I've checked the completed box here because I'm studying these and so I close that one and then I just call one of these book of life and I'll save it to lock that in and close that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here I don't want two uh, different book of life collection notes so I'm going to take this bulk move button and, and click it which activates these check boxes and I could individually select verses that I want to move over or I can select all of them like this. And then I come down to this bulk move drag point and I click and start to drag and I get this little symbol and I drag over here. And now instead of 14 verses, I have 29. So you can see from 24 and 17, I've got 29 unique verses. There were just five extra as I merged uh, those together. So I can close this pane and now I can study this topic on the book of life and go down through all these verses, make notes here in the master note area. And I can even expand this pane and make comments just on the verses themselves. You could do that on any of these panes as you're studying the scriptures. You can always expand that, see your verse notes. But this is super handy to have a master note now on the topic that will be tied to all of these verses. And so, I've got a uh, book of life entry here. That's why there's two of them, because I just created another, which I'll delete. But that's how you use scripture notes to search deeper into a topic. You, you start with a certain point, and then you just start to notice what's in each of your searches. And what does that search lead me to? Well, it leads me to this. It leads me to this. And you just go from point A to B to C until you're satisfied with that, and then you can close these panes and jump right back to where you started. So it's a great way to stud study and search the scriptures and be able to have a powerful tool that lets you do these Boolean searches. If you're, if you're not familiar with how to do it, it's easy to start off. You can start off with single words, which is how most uh, text search engines function. And then you can learn how to do Boolean searches if you click that search help button right at the top of the pane here, search help. And that will open up this search cheat sheet that gives you a whole bunch of examples, ways to do simple searches, building up to more complex searches, and just take it one step at a time. It's really easy to learn and it's life-changing in how you study the scriptures. So with that, I'll close out this video and see you next time.